Hello guys, today I'm starting something interesting and new on this channel. I will create a project step by step in almost live coding mode. Quite a long time ago, like 2 or 3 years ago, I've been doing such videos of like 7 steps of creating projects step by step, each 20 minutes long or something like that. So let's get back to the roots and try to do that. And the first video will be not that technical, it's mostly about planning. So you got the specification from your client, something like this, I have a real Google Doc, and we will transform it into actually plan of actions. So it's kind of two things that I'm doing here, evaluating the project for like money and time and budget for the client, and then during that analysis I get a list of questions to the client. So how exactly should some feature work? What is missing, some text or something? more details missing, stuff like hosting, payments, a lot of that stuff, and I will discuss that in this video. I will tell you exactly step by step how I transformed this specification by client, six pages Google Doc, this document. So plan of actions with rough estimates with questions to the client, and those questions were discussed and shaped the actual estimate and the plan of actions for the actual coding. So in the future videos, one by one, I will do the coding, but today we're talking about planning the project. So this video will be mostly useful for freelancers or project managers who are in the position of evaluating the project or talking to client, more like client manager or agency owner. So let's discuss how to transform the specification into plan of actions. Quick note and backstory of why I'm doing this project. Typically, I don't do client work anymore. I dismissed my team. I focused on the content and quick admin panel, but I got some emails from potential clients who want to work with me and I would refuse, but this project sounded to me like a typical pretty small or mid-sized project for lessons on YouTube or my courses. So I thought, why don't I help this guy with his idea and also help you guys on YouTube because I'm constantly searching for new topics on YouTube. So I'm not doing this project for the money. I do get paid some amount, but it's like one third of what I would charge regularly. I'm kind of calling it educational mission. So we discussed that with the client and he agreed that the code of the project will be published on GitHub. And he agreed that I published this specification on Google Docs. So the links to the docs will be also available in the description. And we'll start with the specification. So first thing I advise to do is to read the specification three times. First time, you skim that, like roughly understand what the project is about. So it's about checklists. And we named the code name of the project as Checklister. So it's similar to something like Asana or even Todoist, but for specific industry where checklists are really important. So for example, you have a checklist for deployment and you need to repeat that checklist whether the deployment is successful. So there are checklist groups. So for example, preparation, automated tests, like deployment to staging, something like that. And there will be checklists with items and some more details are described in the specification. I will share that document publicly, as I said, so you can read it in full, but I will just run through it. So this is the dashboards that were created actually in Canva. I was surprised that it's possible to create such designs in canva.com. I use Canva for thumbnails for my YouTube videos, but it's pretty good for like design mockups. So on top of checklists, there will be functions like my day, important and planned. So this is what user can do, check mark a task, to add to my day. So first read is just taking a look at the project and evaluate so my day. Probably there should be some kind of admin panel. Oh, this is important monetization. Okay, so there should be payments involved. So that makes scope a bit bigger then some details and then admin panel for content upload. So to prepare those checklists and some more details. So it's a pretty simple project, roughly simple. So I evaluate it as a few weeks of work if I did it full time, probably even faster. But since I will be spending only part of the day on this project, we'll see how much time it actually takes. So as I said, first thing you should do is to read three times. First, you just skim and then you try to read. Second read, what I would advise is you try to form the entities of the project. I do it in the form of database schema. So database tables, it doesn't necessarily have to be like migrations or anything, but just what the project is about. Okay, users, admin panel, so roles. Okay, so users roles, and I open the text doc, for example, sublime or any text. So okay, users, 
rows and I just note down the database tables or entities. Okay, so these are grouped into groups and then there's checklist and items. So groups, checklists, items. Then there is my day and important and plan. So probably something like tasks users belongs to many relationship. Then note for a task. My day is the same thing. So we're reading the second time, but with a different purpose, right? Then monetization. Okay, so payments, maybe more tables around payments and admin panel content upload, edit pages. Okay, so pages should be editable. And then at the end, what do we have? Stripe. Okay. Google Analytics is just JavaScript. Email marketing provider. Not sure how it should work. So I should ask the client. Multi language is cool. So in general, that's all we're working with eight entities. And that gives you a rough estimate of what you're working with from technical point of view already. And then the third time as you're reading the specification, you start to form the plan. So I'll just show you the final plan of actions. And this may be roughly the plan of lessons for the YouTube for the future. So install Laravel admin panel design. And this is the first question design theme. So do we use some theme or do we create custom design? And I'm not a designer. So if we're going custom, then someone should be hired for that. Otherwise, if we're going for the theme, is it Tailwind or Bootstrap? How technical is the client? Can he decide that? So after some discussion, I realized that the client is on a quite a tight budget, which means they go for speed. So we're going for quick solution for Bootstrap and for ready free theme color UI. And then I think in terms of data, so okay, we're doing checklist groups and checklists, but first we need to manage them, we need to prepare them. So I tend to start with admin panel first in any project. It's a general discussion and it could be both ways. You can start with design first, it's personal preference. But the way how I do it is start from the database structure, then that database should be managed by admin panel and then we create user area. So for admin panel minimum things, what we can start with is roles and permissions, of course, managing checklist groups and checklists. And that is a rough estimate. Don't take it as a like really precise number. It's more or less. And then when I thought about managing the tasks, I immediately asked the question to the client, what should be inside of the task? Because it's related to text area and editors like C key editor or anything. Maybe they want to have images and videos like in the specification. So I've noticed this one. So I asked for more information, any examples of actual texts. And this is important. When you get the specification from the client, please ask them for real examples of real data or real text. It's not just lorem ipsum or some dummy text. It should be as real as possible because then it may affect your decision on what to use some technology decision, some editor. If you see that something is more complex, then you increase the scope. It's preventing you from surprises in the end. So in the end, if they give you the text only afterwards, then you see that, oh, that text contains like a lot of things that we didn't talk about. So talk about it upfront. And if they have something, some text, please ask at this point. And here in the plan before discussing with the client, I added question marks on the things that are not clear. So similar to pages management, and then we discussed that and they sent me the real text, which I will implement later in the later videos, then what we need to do. Okay, so for admin panel, it's enough for now. So we have checklists, then we can go to user registration and welcome page, then it goes back to customers list for admin panel, because we have registered users now, so we can show them. And then here's the answer. But the question was, do we really need notes or tags for the customers? So while reading the specification again, the third time, I've noticed this. So customer data section, add note and tags for the customers for the users. And I asked, do you really want to add notes and tags because you can do it externally in somewhere like CRM or your database or whatever. And the client told me it's not really a requirement. And similar here, on top, I think it was user experiment, registration by first name and last name. And I asked, I know that Laravel has the one name field by default, whatever you use like Laravel UI or Jetstream or Breeze, it's one name. So I suggested, why don't we go with one name? And he said, okay. 
And then I ask store name. What is a store name? Do we really need it? Will every user have that? And they replied with yes, every user will have that. And it is a required field. So we do need that. So all those details one by one you discuss with that doc. And I've chosen the format of Google Doc. We added the comments of Google Docs and discussed there. I won't reveal the actual comments and discussions, but here's the result. So any comments that are after those discussions should be here. And then the question mark goes out from here. And then basically one by one, you list all the features, the way how you would probably create that step by step. Of course, there will be surprises, but this is the first draft of plan, which ends up at some kind of estimate. And this is another important part. Of course, it depends on the project, but the way how I like to do that is the first milestone, the first goal is to launch something in public. So I usually transform the plan into two phases. First phase is we launch something that can be shown to the clients, to the customers. And then there are kind of extra tasks, which we do a bit later while the client is getting feedback from their users, their customers, then there's phase two. So I assigned payment system in the phase two, because the full system will be working like generally with those tasks and checklists. And meanwhile, I will build the Stripe payment. And Stripe payment has a lot of questions in itself. A few things are listed here. There were a bit more discussions. So payments is quite a big thing to build. Luckily, this client is technical enough to know that Stripe exists and we will use Stripe. So we won't use something like PayPal or Paddle or anything like that. It will be Stripe. And then for example, integration with email marketing provider. In the specification, look for things like this one. Integration with email marketing provider. It may mean just adding the user to some list of email, or it may mean a huge feature for two weeks of work. Because the client, if they're not technical, they don't really know how much things take. Maybe they imagine that there's some kind of magic integration with one button or something with some package, but it's not always the case. Also email marketing provider, which one? Because it's different integration with like MailChimp or ConvertKit or whatever. So discuss that and put that in the comments here. So the result of all that work is a plan of actions with some kind of estimate. And then you can evaluate the money, the budget, the time, at least the range. As I said, there will be surprises no matter what. But at this point, your goal is to minimize the surprises and discuss as many details as possible. And then you need to ask some general questions about the workflow of the project. So I have two here and I will add number three at the end, which I discussed privately with that client. So first the server's domain and deployment, you need to figure out upfront what stack the client has. Are they familiar with deployment at all? Maybe not. If they have some kind of hosting, what it is, if they have a domain name, where is it registered? So you need to discuss that upfront because time and time again, I've encountered the situation that, okay, the project is done. Now let's launch it. And then I find out that the client has shared hosting in some kind of local provider on PHP 7.1 or whatever version. So to avoid those discuss that upfront. And in this case, I suggest my way of doing that. I will use Laravel Forge to provision DigitalOcean server. So it's quite easy for me to do. I have all the procedures, all the structure, all the processes, but I need to discuss that with the client upfront to minimize surprises again. And then payment. Payment is not just the amount of money for the project. It's extra sub questions like how much you charge per hour in case of extra features. What are the options for the pricing? So maybe we can remove some features and lower the price to deliver faster. Or on the contrary, maybe you can offer some extra value for bigger price. And finally, payment method. There may be a problem transferring the money. Also, you need to discuss that upfront. It's kind of like a contract signing. You may or may not sign the contract. So that would be a separate document and those should be in there those conditions. And do you notice that I don't ask the client, I kind of ask the client, but I suggest my own way of doing things, you make it easier for the client to respond instead of how do we deploy you do I deploy like this? Do you agree? Or do you have another plan? payments. This is the amount for this, this and this. Do you agree or not? And third question, what I would ask, but we discussed that privately with the client is the workflow of communication. So which means of communication do you have for discussing the project? Is it Trello? Is it email? Is it zoom? Is it Slack? 
How often? Do you do a daily stand-up? Do you catch up once a week? Where do you store the documents or assets if there are any? So all of those tools should be also discussed up front. And then you may have another Zoom call or something or meet in person and then sign the contract, whether it's like paper contract or verbally or virtually agree on the terms. And only then you go to your editor and start coding. So this is my way how I usually transform the specification into the plan of actions before coding, before actually agreeing to code the project, because during those discussions, you may see some red flags for the client. Multiple times I've walked away from the deal, from the actual coding, when I saw in the beginning in the discussion process that the client has some kind of things that I don't really like. Maybe they try to negotiate every dollar. That's a red flag. Maybe they don't know any small details about any technicality. So that's a red flag because they would need a lot of hand holding along the way. It may be good if you take those clients, but not for me. Maybe they are trying to do too much micromanaging. I dislike that as well. So depending on the clients that you do accept, you may walk away from the deal during doing the plan phase. And don't be afraid to do that, to decline the client, because if you decline the client, which may be bad, after some time, you may land the client, which will 2x your revenue instead. Of course, again, it depends on your situation. It depends on how much money you need, like daily in the short term. So there's no one solution. But generally, this process gives you clarity and minimizes the surprises along the way. But there will be surprises and those will be in the next videos in the series where we step by step create that project together. I will lead the way, but we will discuss everything in YouTube comments and let's go. See you tomorrow in the next video where we install the Laravel and begin the coding.